Welcome back, everybody. It's time for another LED Live, and we are going to talk about the topic of time. Do you guys waste a lot of time, or are you spending your time wisely? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Light exposing darkness. All right, guys, we're back at it. Here's the topic of time. Mm. Doesn't it seem like we're always out of time? Yeah, not enough, man. You, you know, like like the little rabbit from uh, what's the what's the <laughs> Alice cartoon? Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, where he's just running around. He's always out of time. Yeah. I feel like a chicken running around with my head cut off a lot of the time, <laughs> right? Your pain, yes. Yes, but time is an issue that um, I think we all need to be aware of. But before we get into that, we want to thank all of our Patreon donors. It's time to give you guys props for all the support and love that you've shared with us that allows us to even be able to do this. So um, thank you guys for, for supporting us on Patreon. And we want you to know that if you haven't signed up for to be a Patreon donor, you know, we have a lot of things that we try to put out, extra uh, content, uh, there are perks that uh, only are specifically for our Patreon donors. So if you guys uh, would like to see a little bit more, maybe some behind the scenes, check us out. We also want to tell you we sell t-shirts. If you're new to our channel, you probably hear us say this every single time, but we're always wearing t-shirts on all of our shows, and we've got a lot of cool designs. So check on the links below and uh, hit us up with some t-shirts because that also helps support our ministry in many different ways. Um, and today we want to highlight a couple of videos, documentaries that we have made over the years, uh, one called Pseudology that really talks about the brain and, and what happens in the brain when we watch TV or movies. Very interesting because when you kind of understand how the mechanics of it works, and we waste a lot of time watching movies and television. Um, this is a great documentary for you if you haven't seen it already. Also, a lot of people waste a lot of time in social media. So we wanna share with you a documentary that we made called Hashtag Selfie, um, and really kind of goes over the use of social media and the time that everybody spends. And also, if we think of media and the way people waste a lot of time, Video games, right? Yeah. We've covered that topic many times on this channel, and uh, that we've got lots of documentaries. So check them out. They're called Controllers One, Two, Three, and uh, those are got some videos that will give you some great information on the video game topic. We also have some other documentaries called The Replacement Gods. If you're into superheroes, which uh, a lot of people are these days, uh, you might want to be aware of some of the messages that are in there, where some of these superheroes come from. So we've made two documentaries on this, Replacement Gods 1 and 2. Check them out, they're awesome. And if you don't like DVDs, don't even own a DVD, we have a Vimeo page where you can actually rent the videos for a real reasonable cost. Okay, what do they cost, Keith? Uh, they range, but you know, usually about four ninety nine, four ninety nine, or two ninety nine. You know. Okay, so that's that's cheap considering, right? That's like that's like Redbox cheap. Actually, I don't even know how much Redbox costs, right? <laughs> right? But you can get them pretty cheap, and it helps out our ministry as well. And we want to tell you about another company where we actually get a lot of stock media from. It's called VideoMission.com pictures and video clips on there so if you are like a youtuber making youtube videos and you need some high class video 4k um, cinematic reenactments of bible topics check these guys out videomission.com all right guys let's get into this all right mm -hmm. so i want to give you some statistics here uh, the average person is going to spend about 43 days on hold with automated uh, customer service in your lifetime. I was doing that yesterday, man. 43 <laughs> days, right? Isn't that just frustrating it's when it's just yeah. like... And you know they play this like super calming music because yeah. it's just like steaming on the yeah. other end, right? Sometimes. Uh, you know, I called Apple the other day. I don't remember what about, but uh, you can actually choose your music now. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. That's clever. It would be Apple to do that. That's really interesting. It's like you want classical, you want easy listening. Right? Or You're really upset. You want yeah. some like heavy metal. Yeah. Or you yeah. just like, <laughs> get into it. That's yeah. awesome. But in a lifetime, people are going to spend about 43 days on hold. Human oh. beings will also spend approximately about six months of their lives waiting in line for things. Oh, man. Uh, Michelle, oh, you used a funny months. word for waiting in line today. What was that? Q? Q. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Waiting up in the queue, right? 
So that's a lot of time that people are going to spend um, just standing around wasting time. And if you notice, what do people usually do with their time when they're sitting around? Staring at a phone. Now they're on their phones. Table. Right, right. Everybody's on their phones. Yeah. Okay, just driving in your car. Any of you guys got a long commute? Yep. I drive an hour both ways. Hour to work. Man, this man is dedicated to coming to work. Two hours back home usually. That's, that, <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of time spent Aww. in your car. But what do you do in your car? Uh, I watch a lot of YouTube. I mean, I listen to a lot of YouTube. You know. Oh, no. I, before yeah, yeah. I leave, I, I find a good topic, whether it's a sermon or a show like this, and I, I press play, and I put it in a place where uh, I don't look at it. Yeah. <laughs> right in my dash. You but, know, uh, I used to commute when I lived in Los Angeles for a long time, and I would listen to the Bible, and it was amazing just commuting. I mean, mm -hmm. I covered, like, so much of the Bible. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. tons and tons of time just spent in the car. You know, so you can either talk to your friends or you can gain something that uh, would be profitable. So good, good job. I've done the Bible. Also, Keith gave me a, um, a book on tape of a guy's testimony that I've been listening to. So, so I was going to say, though, um, just to kind of play the other side on this, if you spend six months waiting in line and that time is wasted and you were on your phone doing something productive, hmm, it's not go. necessarily a waste of time. It's really right. not. And that's one, one thing that we really want to um, highlight in here is what are you doing with your time? Yeah. So that's an excellent point. Um, are you playing Bejeweled in line? That's, or right, like, that's <laughs> right. That's right. You know, time is interesting. Have you guys ever looked into um, the theory of relativity by Albert Einstein? A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Okay. So time, is it constant? He didn't think so. He didn't think so. You're right? Yeah. Did you know that the time, according to his theories, at your head is different than the time at your feet? Did hmm. you know that? I, don't, I can't comprehend that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so here's how, here's how they actually studied this. They, they um, took two clocks that were exactly the same, and they sent one uh, up in the air and flew it around, and then they sent one on the bottom, and they studied the, the difference in the time, and there was a difference in the time. Okay, I've heard yeah. that. Yes, so that, that was basically um, his uh, beginning stages of him going, whoa, like, what's the deal with this thing called time? It's actually like it can be warped and it can be changed. And they actually had, you know, he had a lot of very strange theories of, of basically if you were, like, sitting there looking at the Big Ben clock, right? and you were backing away from the clock. If you could back away from the clock at the speed of light, the clock would stop. Hmm. Yeah, trip out on that. It's like, <laughs> what? But anyway, uh, it's very interesting when you look at time. Time is different for a lot of us. And uh, Keith, or Mikey, now that we're a little bit older than you two in the, in hmm. the room here, uh, do you guys ever feel like time is speeding up? It is, yeah. isn't it? Right? <laughs> right? Why? why? Why do you think it does that? The, the best explanation I've ever heard is the older you get, that slice that you're living is a smaller portion hmm. of your life comparatively. Hmm. So, for example, if you're um, four years old, you know, a year is like, it's, a, it's like now 20% of your life, yeah. right? right? Whereas if you're 90, a year is one ninetieth of your life, right? So hmm. it doesn't seem yeah. like... It's right. long. It's going faster. That's right. the explanation I've heard. So that's actually a pretty close explanation to what these researchers found out. It's, it's, it's got a li little bit different of a variation of that. Um, here's what the researchers wanted to test. Is, is, is there actually a physiological thing that's happening inside of our brains that is basically making us perceive time differently than someone that is younger. And that's kind of what they were studying. So when they really looked at this, they really looked at how the brain processes images. Now, when you are in a new environment and something is really exciting and, and all of a sudden you're like just taking it in, what your brain is doing is going it's like mm -hmm. focusing on all the image and then it's like recording all this image. When you've been to some familiar place a lot, your brain doesn't need all that information. So it actually doesn't sit there and analyze it like you would. And so what's happening is in someone that is older, um, their brain is actually like, for lack of a better term, their equipment is sort of breaking down. Mm. <laughs> and so they, their brain is not working in the same capacity that someone who is young that is analyzing that time. And so that analyzation actually appears that it's a much longer period of time, even though the same time of clock has gone by. So this is kind of what, what's interesting. This is what this article says. Um, quartz, of course, they make watches. This is what they said in this um, article. 
Time is happening in the mind's eye, and it's related to the number of mental images that the brain encounters and organizes the state uh, and the state of our brains as we age. When we get older, the rate at which changes in the mental images are perceived decreases because several transforming physical features, including vision, brain complexity, and later in life, degradation of the pathways that transmit the information. And the shift in image processing leads to the sense of time speeding up. So you're not processing... I'm pretty sure that just completely went over my head. <laughs> right, right. So you're just not processing the information in the same way. Okay. You, your brain is processing information faster than, than my brain. Well, that's, that sounds a bit complicated. I just thought it was responsibility. You guys yeah. have kids and all these things, right. and you're just trying to pack so much into your time, whereas we go home and we have more choice as to right. what we spend our time doing. There's got to be an age where that, where that, you know, there's a crossover on that threshold because otherwise, you know, you're saying a newborn has the fastest working brain and then it just goes downhill from there. Mm -hmm. And it would make sense that there's a point of degradation, but up until that point, it sounds like, yeah, your brain is not analyzing those images, but it should certainly be recalling them and not spending the time in analyzation. Right. So uh, the, the article, when you read the whole thing, actually talks about the elderly driving. Why is someone who's been on the planet for 80 years have a harder time than a 20-year-old that gets in the car? Mm -hmm. And it's because the 20-year-old, like, I, I can kind of equate this when I played sports. Um, when I used to play basketball, um, and I was kind of in my prime of it, uh, I could actually see where everyone was, and it was like my brain was analyzing, like, okay, this person's going to run here, this person, mm -hmm. and it's happening in a split second mm -hmm. of a thing. I get out there and I try to play basketball now, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> running across the field. There's the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like time is not the same as what I remember it to be in, in my mm -hmm. earlier years. So anyway, that's that's kind of it. They have a lot of graphs and stuff that they showed in this article, which was which was kind of interesting. Um, how when you're younger, you perceive a lot more of these images. When you're older, you perceive less, or you really like analyze them less. That was okay, kind of so it happens whether you're in a new environment or not. So the two of us could be in a brand new environment. We've never seen it, and we would respond differently just because of age. Yes, I mean, it, like, these, like I said, the factors are also due to the equipment, and so the mm -hmm. mental factors, the aging process, all that kind of stuff. So stuff's working slower. Okay. But yes, it's, they're not looking at those images in the same way that you would be. Did it say at what point it starts working slower? Or no. is it just like kind of relative because it's different for different people? Yeah, as you get older. I mean, I've met some 80-year-olds that are sharp as a tack, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spit off a joke like he was 20 years old. It's <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so here's some more interesting facts about time. There was a man that stood in line for a living. He, he, have you met these people or ever seen them? You, you're yeah. from New York. Yeah, people get paid to <laughs> stand in line. If there's a new iPhone really? is coming out and the yes. line is like three blocks down, yes. you can have someone of. spend their time so, there. Wait. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is actually true in New York. Okay. Okay. Um, you're gonna talk about yeah, that. there there was people that were paid to stand in line, and somebody waited. 10 days mm -hmm. for the iPhone 7. Camped out with their tents and all that. 10 days. People bringing them food. Like, it's I, crazy. I, just, I just wonder, like, honestly, what, what do you need that phone for that bad? Wow. Because Someone's he, paying me. I'm not asking questions. Right. <laughs> I'll just stand in line. <laughs> but isn't that an interesting thing that why would somebody pay for someone to do that? Hmm. Because they think their time is more valuably spent in other places. I'm That's wondering right. how That's you right. can stand in line for 10 days. Like, is the dude using the bathroom on the curb or what? I mean... <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they have to leave, right? I don't know. But basically, they were paid about 300 bucks um, to hold a spot for, for, for Apple. I mean, I don't know if that's $300 per day or what, but... I imagine that's... total for 10 days, that's like... Yeah, a yeah. In New Zealand, when people were waiting for the iPhone, um, they were actually allowed to have a little robot or something mm. that would hold <laughs> their phone. And as long as they were connected to FaceTime, they could remain in the line in oh, that queue. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So, so the little robot had to be like there, and your FaceTime had to see at what point. Somebody's you know, just going to pick up that robot and run off with it. <laughs> right? right? Anyway, the value of time. So here's an interesting thing. How much time do you think we actually spend on our phones? So much. Per day or? Yeah, yeah give, give, give me a guess. Is, Four? is this like talking <laughs> on the phone or just doing everything on the phone? Yeah, playing with your phone, talking on your phone, um, could be all of the above. Uh, probably like 
half of your waking hours, I would think. <laughs> okay, Whoa. so they spend about 23 days a year. Now that's hmm. 24 hours, 23 mm -hmm. days a year. So if you are considering that you actually only slept, you know, for eight hours out of the day or whatever like this, this is really like mm, closer to 40 or 50 days out of the year you're gonna use. How many days are in a year? 365. So divide that. That's one sixth, roughly. One I'll seven. believe you. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, mathematicians in the room. Mm. One sixth of your day, so yeah, if you're awake for 10 hours out of the day, how many hours is that? So you're, you're roughly gonna spend one sixth of the day at, at, at playing with your phone. Now that translates to about 90 minutes a day. Wow. Okay. okay, so 90 minutes a day is kind of like what people actually are spending. Now, if you kept that pace up, that's nine years of the average person's life, mm -hmm. assuming yeah. that you sleep. Assuming that you sleep. Yeah, okay. right? <laughs> Almost, a, what, what is that, one-tenth of your life, you know? I feel like people spend more time than that, really, but... Yeah, I don't think, that's not bad. Yeah. If you're just Hour communicating half, with people like or using yeah. the work that we do. What if you were reading the Bible on your phone? That'd be awesome. Nice. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. What if you were doing productive things with that time? I wouldn't recommend, time, but that's nice. Mm -hmm. But that, that would actually be an incredible amount of time that you would accumulate yeah. learning something positive. So that's just something to keep in mind what people are doing with their, with their time. Uh, Market Watch is, is, um, is actually stating that most people spend a majority of their waking hours on their devices. Now, I don't know how they came to this conclusion and Timex, that was who did the study before, came to a, um, a little bit different of a conclusion. But I think what these guys are taking into account is people working in front of computers. Now, I work in front of a computer as well. You guys all do too. So that's, what, nine hours we're yeah. spending in front of, like, you know, something. So mm -hmm. majority of our day is literally spent in front of these screens. Now, that's just, that's just a lot of screen time. Yeah. And so it's pretty easy to be distracted, you know, like when you sit down, you go to answer an email, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you're watching YouTube. Yeah. Right? <laughs> happens, it happens actually a lot. We've shown this graph before, but I wanted to show this to our viewers, um, literally just to keep this before their minds, how much time people are actually spending um, doing these various different activities out of the day. Uh, people sleep about eight, eight and a half hours out of the day. They work about 5.75 hours out of the day. And then the blue little graph here, the blue part of the, of the pie, is what people spend in leisure time, leisure sports, all that. There's a little pink sliver right in there that basically is how much time people spend in civil or religious activities. Mm -hmm. So reading your Bible, anything like that is 0.21 hours out of the day. Wow. That's, the, that's the reality of what people are doing with their time. Most people are not spending much time in religious activities at all. I wonder, I wish there was like a statistic of this in the 40s or something. You know, there's still, yeah, maybe they didn't have phones, but they still had whatever. Magazines and stuff. Yeah, right. go to the show or whatever. Um, would religious activities still be so small or would it be more of a... Yeah. Wider area. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we had some sort of data on the 1800s. I mean, those people knew their Bibles. Yeah. And you read those stories of the Great Awakening, and it's like, they were like, oh, yeah, this verse, bop, 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 this verse, bop, 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 bop. You know, we're like, hold on, I'll look that up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll Google that. Yeah, that would be very interesting. But this is how much time people are actually spending in religious activities. Here's something that I found that was kind of interesting too, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So this is what people do with their time. This is obviously taken from the U United States Department of Labor. So what everybody's doing with their time. Um, total care and helping for the household. You can see um, part of this graph, they're spending um, a, a fair amount of time um, caring for the children and stuff. Physical care for children, you can see the graph go down. I want you to notice how it says reading to household children. This is like Which one is point it? Uh, zero, it's read the, the middle one. Thing on it's there. the smallest thing on there, what people are doing with their time. They are not reading to their kids. Wow. And uh, I mean, that is alarming because it's like, you know, as a family, we have family worship every single night, and we read books, and we read stories to our kids, and I know you guys do that um, the same as well with your kids. Um, you know, think about how valuable that is. The average United States child is not read to by their parents. Right. 
And so, you know, it's less than, let's see, if that's one hour, it's less than five minutes wow. reading to the children. And yeah. for you girls, when you guys have children, I'm telling you the best thing you could do for your children is to read to them. Um, I mean, it's just an amazing thing when they all of a sudden just, you see them uh, soak up a desire for learning. I think mm -hmm. your daughter, Keith, is like a total bookworm, right? Yeah. I mean, mm. they can't awesome. buy books fast enough for her daughter. She's just like, <laughs> <laughs> knowledge. Awesome. Yeah, it's mm. awesome. So here's why I bring this up. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 says this. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest down in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and, and shall be frontlets between thy eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of the house and on thy gates. Wow. Mm -hmm. The reason why... God gave this inspiration to Moses to teach the children of Israel. You need to teach the children the ways of God. Part of doing that is sitting down and reading to them, spending time with them, and spending time teaching them, right? That's, that's, that's what Moses was really hammering away. And, and what's interesting is when I read the Bible, it's like it's no different for us today. We can see we have this same struggle as what those children of Israel did. Because look at this. If you read a little bit later, right? You remember Joshua? Judges 2, 10 through 11 says, And also all that generation that were gathered unto their fathers, there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and Ooh. served Balaam. Yeah. In one generation, one generation, by the parents not reading to the child and spending time to teach the children those important religious principles, one generation, they walked away from God. So and I, I've, I've seen this personally in my family. I have family members in my family that did not teach their children about the ways of God. And now they're literally like, you know, what, what did I do? What can I do now? Mm -hmm. How can I get them back? And so it's very important, not only do we need to spend time with God, but we need to also spend that time teaching and educating our children. And that's why it says in Deuteronomy 6, 5, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Teach your children those concepts as well. It, it's, it's scary, the, the times we're living in now, and how it seems like parents are afraid to teach their children. Right. You know, the, the, the word teach has now been replaced with impose, or they don't want to offend anyone, or they, yeah. want their, their, they don't want their child to feel um, either left out of things. So go try whatever you want and make your own decisions. It's like, well, are you raising your child then? You know, mm -hmm. how, how, do you not, how, how do you raise a child without teaching them morals and your beliefs and all these things? That's right, that's right. You know, instead we're giving devices to our kids we're giving them the phones we're mm. giving them well that's a good point if you don't teach them the world will that's or right. whoever they come in contact that's will. right so all the movies i mean you just think about like let's just say your kid watches a movie or two a week right mm -hmm. and you did no reading to them you you you've now just educated them in the ways of hollywood <laughs> yeah, and exactly. the world whereas you missed out on an opportunity to teach them these divine principles mm. and i feel like not teaching is teaching in itself that's right. in, in, a, in a strange way, because by you remaining silent, that opens the door to the opposite. And who knows where the child will end up without any guidance or formal training. That's right. That's a good point. So because of our use of time, if you look at Christians specifically, it's not really a surprise that I think this was put out by Barna Group. When they pulled Christians, they said, you know, what are you, what are you most confident in? What are you least confident in? They said, we're, we're best at maintaining healthy relationships as Christians. We think we do that better than anything. Mm -hmm. The thing that they listed worst statistically was Bible knowledge. Mm. Christians? Yes, wow. Christians. And so I'm thinking, something wrong with that picture, because mm. how can you say that you're best at maintaining relationships if your relationship with God, which is created by you know, spending time in His Word, mm. is least? Mm -hmm. You have the least confidence in right. that. Your Bible knowledge is, is low. How could you expect to get any of your relationships really right and healthy? Yeah, I suppose, right. yeah, it, when you're looking at where's your priority, 
do you want to maintain as many friendships as you can with whoever you can and kind of suppress what you believe or is God the person that you're really trying to maintain a relationship with mm -hmm. and if that's the case unfortunately it happens naturally you will lose some some earthly friendships right it's which, which one do you see more important seek first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God. Amen. and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you it's like mm -hmm. whatever the desires are of your heart when you put God as the primary focus he will he will give you the things that really give you those pieces of of happiness and the peace and the joy and the things that that are in life proverbs 8 17 says this i love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me i think this is cool because mm -hmm. There, there is so many people that are searching for all kinds of things in life to make them happy. And, and it's really neat. Like God is, is, even though he's far away, we have not seen him. And he promises us, literally, if you seek me, you will find me. That mm -hmm. is a promise that whatever you're struggling with, if you need answers and you are like, God, show me yourself, right? Yeah. That's what this Bible verse says. He will show up and he will say, you, you, you will meet me. What do you think the latter part of that verse is alluding to? Why does it specifically say early? I believe that, um, like anything else, if you study the topic of food, it's very interesting. What you put in your stomach first actually dictates what you're going to eat the rest of the day. Did you know that? Mm -mm. If you actually have the wrong type of like, like crackers and things like this in the morning, you're going to chase that cracker all day long, right? Interesting. So if you start out your day with a relationship with God, like lovingly opening your heart to Him, I guarantee you, it's like all of a sudden it sets the stage for everything else. That's why like, the world understands this concept as well. You have a award ceremony, right? It's very important to them who comes out first mm -hmm. and sets the stage for the night. Right? Mm -hmm. we, have, we have that all the time. I mean, there's, they're always talking about this in different avenues of, of, of you know, public speaking or whatever like this. It's like, I think that when you start your day, that will set the stage for how the events are going to roll out in your day. Makes sense. Think about this. Adam and Eve being created in the Garden of Eden, right? I, I just, I love kind of just like mentally thinking about this experience. Um, God came down often in the cool of the day to hang out with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, right? He left them to the whole day. You guys do what you want, right? And he comes down at the end of the day, you know, what'd you, what'd you see? What'd you like? What'd mm -hmm. you do, right? He just wanted to hang out with them yeah. and be with them. And then he reserves this whole day. He reserves the Sabbath. He says, for one day, I'm all yours. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff in the universe, but I'm gonna come in and hang out with you guys and, and I want you guys to hang out with me and we're just gonna spend the whole day together, right? When you kind of view our time like that, then it really makes sense. God, God is so patient with us. He gives us six days to do whatever it is that we want. Yeah. But one day, he says, I wanna spend time with you. That's all, I wanna spend time with you. And if we began to look at our time with it like that, then we would be like, you know, not so, oh, right, well, I can't do this and I can't do that on yeah. the weekend and blah, 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 because it's the <laughs> Sabbath, you know? It be really begins this other day where it's just like, no, this is about a relationship and a relationship with God. It's very interesting when you look at the story or the parable that Jesus told in Matthew 22, one through 14. We won't read the whole thing just for the sake of time. But this is the story where a wedding was prepared mm. and, you know, the king sent out his servants and said, you know, you know, it's all prepared. Like, please come to the wedding. And Keith, do you remember what 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 happened? Well, some people um, it seemed like they wanted to come, but they had some other things to do. And so they said, you know, that's great. But they made some excuses. You know, I have to attend to my business or my farm. And wow. so I'm going to take a rain check. Yeah. So isn't it interesting that in this very important time, I mean, everybody loves to go to a wedding, right? I mean, it's fun. There's, there's food. Everybody's in a good mood. Uh, yet there's people who have so filled their time that they did not have time for this event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that, I think, is shocking. And, you know, in, in this verse, it even uses the word remnant, right? Mm -hmm. Those that were left, right? I kind of consider the Christians at the end of the world here the remnant. And mm -hmm. they were the ones that were like, literally like, man, I, I've, got, I've got other things to do. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be careful that we don't just get so busy in life that we're literally like, 
only spending time with God when it's convenient. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I also believe that time is a, is a, is a talent. It is. Yeah. You guys remember the story of the talents? Mm -hmm. Right? The parable? Mm -hmm. So everybody's given a talent, right? Mm -hmm. And basically God is, is requiring at the end of his time when he comes back and he says, what did you do with this talent that I gave to you, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that every single one of us is going to have to answer to God with the use of our time. Everyone is given an equal, uh, almost an equal allotment of time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we may not have the same skills. We may not have the same public speaking abilities or whatever. Uh, we vary in all of those, those skill sets. But all of us have this very consistent thing of time. And, you know, did you use your time wisely? You know, it's also interesting. A lot of people like to focus on the talents that were given. But there were also talents that were acquired. And if we all have the talent of time, some people are born with the natural gift of being good at music. They sit down at a piano and within a year they're, you know, masters at this instrument. Some people may take longer, but they could still acquire it and use it for God. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, everyone has time and that's the beautiful thing about it is that although we may not be born with 10 different talents, we can acquire 10 different talents based off of um, traits that we learn and develop within ourselves and I think that's really encouraging um, that we're not just left with nothing time is actually the greatest talent of them all that's right that's right the Bible has a lot to say about time but I, I really am, am fascinated by the idea that everybody has this specific different talent mm -hmm. I mean literally like I've worked in enough work environments and and I love it like I, I, I love working with you guys you guys each bring something unique to the table everybody has a skill and when we put all of our of, of our talents together it, we can make something beautiful with That's that true. you know and mm -hmm. it's just really neat um, I think if everybody was the same uh, there would be a lot more headbutting um, mm -hmm. and and uh, I think you know I've learned to appreciate the variety of, of what everybody brings to the table. But this whole stewardship of time, I believe, is, is the reason why we wanted to do this LED in the first place was just to really to, to put before people, listen, time is, a, is, is an important thing that we need, all need to be aware of. Where we are in the wake of time, mm -hmm. I mean, there is, there is some awesome prophecy channels out there. Mm -hmm. And prophecy is, is an amazing thing. I mean, we've got... Um, um, you know, Bible prophecy made clear, um, school, for school for prophets. I mean, if you guys haven't checked these guys out, we'll put some links in the description below. Check them out. Look into the time prophecies of the Bible. I mean, it's a powerful way to literally walk away from this going, this is impossible for somebody to guess what just happened. Mm. Yeah. There's, there has to be a God, and he has to have this whole thing mapped out. Mm -hmm. Only God can see into the future. No, no, Satan cannot see into the future. And so, um, you know, take a look at where we are in the wake of time. Pull your head out of the, the, the media sandbox, if you would, <laughs> and look around, because I believe that Jesus is coming soon. I really believe Amen. that, and we need to be aware of the time and the day that we live in. Yeah, it reminds me of um, Matthew 25, where Jesus separates these two groups of people, the sheep and, and, and the goats, you know. And um, I think it's, it, um, I'd have to look, I'm not coming up uh, off the top of my head, but it could be in that same chapter where, where he's talking to people and he's saying, you know, um, you know, you did this and you did this and you did this or you didn't do this and you didn't do this and you didn't do this you know like you didn't visit me in prison you didn't give me you know food when I was hungry you didn't you didn't do this all those things have a time element and those people who were faithful to God they they spent their time doing these things you know like feeding people or clothing them or what have you and the and he says you know when you've done it to those people you did it to me and the other people were like well they didn't they didn't they didn't have a second thought about it because they were just, you know, like in tune with serving Christ. And the other people were like, but, but we never saw you, right. you know. Right. And so they spent their time doing other things, mm -hmm. you know. It seems like in, in every, in, uh, maybe not everything, but in a majority of things you read in the Bible is when it comes to parables or little stories that Jesus tells, there's a time aspect. Like even the Good Samaritan, he stopped. He right. took the time to do something for somebody. 
And yeah, did he have other things to do? He did. But he still stopped and took the time to take care of somebody. Just like God comes down off of his throne, you know, then we have the incarnation. What does he do? He takes his time away from heaven and he dedicates that time to saving an entire race of people. And now, what is he doing? Interceding for people, spending his time. So this is a huge, you know, huge topic. And I think God is, is interested in how we spend our time. And if we were to ask ourselves that question, you know, does God care what I do with my time? Yeah. And I think if we answer that honestly, yes, he does. Then we need to come, in, come to him and ask God, what do you want me to do with my time? One of the coolest stories, I think, in the Bible is the story of Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, mm -hmm. and uh, when he got sick, and all of a sudden, it was like he's on his deathbed, and he's crying out to God, and God sends a prophet to him and says, God heard you cry, and he's going to give you a little bit more time. He gave him 15 more years to live, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's rad. I mean, mm -hmm. can you imagine, like, literally a prophet coming into you going, you're on your deathbed. You got 15 years, clock's ticking. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do with your time at that point, right? Yeah. But look at what King Hezekiah did. All of a sudden, he gets, uh, you know, going and things are fine and he kind of forgets about God. And it's like, you know, he asked for a sign. I forgot to mention this part. He asked for a sign that this would be true, that he would have 15 more years. And, and uh, so uh, the prophet said, well, do you want the sun to go forwards or backwards? And he said, well, mm -hmm. it's not really a big deal to make it go forwards. Make it go backwards because nobody's ever seen it go backwards, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden the sun goes backwards, I think three yeah. hours, if I'm, if I'm right, right? Or something like this. And uh, so all of a sudden, guess who's going to show up wondering who had the power to turn the sun back? Who, who do you think showed up? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, an Egyptian king or something. Babylon, yeah. right? <laughs> the, the, stars and the very <laughs> sun-worshipping people, mm -hmm. and it's all of a sudden their god that's been consistently going around the world for whatever, however many centuries, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it goes backwards, and they're like, oh, whoa, mm -hmm. what just happened? <laughs> so right. then they want to seek out who did this, mm -hmm. and the word gets back to Hezekiah, and they come and visit him. And what does he do? Shows them all stuff. Yeah. 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 I got I go gold and, and go silver. Like, look at this, man! I got a I got a Tesla out there in the in the in the garage. You want to see this thing? You want to you want to, you want to see my chariot? Mm. It says nothing about God. Man. Mm. And so, do you know what those Babylonians did? They went back to Babylon and they said, "This guy is crazy rich." Mm. And oh. that word actually got passed down from kings. And when the king that that actually went to go take Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was literally because of Hezekiah's sin. And they went, let's go rob these people. Wow. wow. And when Daniel, you think of Daniel, Daniel was, um, you know, being tested uh, in his in his dedication to God. You know, they, they tried to get Darius to sign this decree that, you know, he would spend your time, if you will, doing other things. Spend it, spend it focusing on Darius, you know, for 30 days. And Daniel said, no, my time for God is my time for God, and I'm not going to change that for anybody. Awesome. And when he did that, God was faithful to him and preserved his life. So time is a huge you know, huge topic. So true. So I want to read to you this article from Forbes magazine, which I thought was very interesting. How do the very wealthy choose to spend their time? Get, take a guess. Traveling. Do you think that there is a big difference with the amount of leisure time that someone who's uber wealthy and someone who's not uber wealthy? Do you think there's a big difference between yes. them? Oh, yeah. Sure. You do? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, because you guys sure <laughs> people that are rich are just bored, man. They start coming with all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff to do. Okay, wait. So you think that rich people actually well, spend more on the... wasted time? Oh, uh, no. It I would say on the rich person, wasted I time. I would say maybe they spend more time on vacation, vacation, but they probably work as hard or harder than other people. Yeah. Okay. Or like, there's a difference between working hard and, and working smart, or like the time you spend working. They're so probably you, very efficient. Right, they're very efficient. So they're able to work maybe the same amount or even less and do more than the average person who's doing the same amount of time. So this study came out of Harvard mm -hmm. and a few other really big schools that I can't even pronounce. Mm -hmm. Don't even know where they are. <laughs> never even heard of them. <laughs> and they studied thousands of people that were quote unquote really rich and some people that were like not so rich. And the interesting thing that they found out, listen to this. There is, however, some key differences between the two. 
For one, although millionaires and non-millionaires enjoyed approximately the same amount of leisure time, millionaires engaged in more active leisure activities such as praying, socializing, exercise, hobbies, and volunteering, while non-millionaires engaged in more passive leisure such as watching TV, napping, resting, or doing nothing. Mm, so That's what they're doing with their time. That's interesting, gotcha. That's interesting yeah. right? Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily that both wasted like this crazy amount of time. It was just like, well, what did they do with their leisure time? Mm. Mm. Rich people who are uber, uber millionaires, I didn't really read anything that was like they were playing GTA 5, you know, for five hours out of the day, yeah. right? They were literally being productive. And I thought this was interesting that they threw in their praying and volunteering, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think about the talent of time. You know what's kind of frustrating? <laughs> God's promises apply to whoever followed them. Because most of his promises are conditional. Yeah. You know, when you think of tithe, prayer and all these things, do this, you get this result. Yeah. Doesn't matter, um, you know, who you believe in or, you know, these other things. Once you do X, here is your, your reward. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of frustrating. God is so, he is so honoring of yeah. what he promised yeah. to you. That's why I really believe the Jewish nation, they've always, yeah. in, throughout history, have made money. Mm. That's true. They're some of the most wealthy people on the world, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why is God promised those people they would be blessed. And they are blessed. They're blessed in business. I've heard business people say you, you don't even want to get into business deals with a, with a Jew because he will have the upper hand every time. <laughs> and God won't go back on that. It doesn't matter how they and treat isn't that him rad? or whatever. They, they literally killed God. <laughs> and yet he's like, no, I'm still going to honor what I told you isn't I was going to do for you. And mm. so when we adhere to the principles that God set up, being others focused, mm -hmm. spending time with God, volunteering our time to just ease the suffering of someone else, he blesses that. I'm reading a book right now because I like um, sociological studies and it's uh, talking about Asian people, Michelle. <laughs> and um, it's kind of alluding to the fact that it's like, you know, we look at a lot of Asians and say, man, they're just so successful. Like how do they have the upper hand in business and jobs and all this? And a lot of it comes from their history of how they've operated for hundreds, if not thousands of years prior. They have this almost ingrained um, work ethic, if you will. And they're, so the book I'm reading is talking about how, for example, in China, you have these rice patties, right? And they don't, um, or haven't for a long time, used a lot of heavy duty equipment. Right. It's a lot of manual labor. Like hand putting yeah. it in the ground. Hand putting it in the ground. It's hard, hard work. And these people can sometimes get two harvests in a season. Wow. You know, if they do it right. You know, if they make sure their patty is level because you have a layer of clay on the bottom so that you can hold the water and then you have a layer of soil on top of that. And it's just like they've got different kinds of rice. They know how to plant, when to plant what rice to plant because of it might be a dry season so this plant acts better in a dry season i mean they've got it all figured out right but you think about that as it carries forward if that's if that's your legacy you know and that's your your family heritage and history and you've you've grown up doing it these people sometimes have worked three thousand hours in a year wow. you know so when it comes to you move on to other things like the corporate world, there's, they're used to working and working right. hard. Mm -hmm. right. And so it's like, why are they successful? Well, they're used to working and working hard, you know? That's it's, why in Tokyo, they have a little box that they sleep in about this much. Uh, they sleep for an hour and then they go back to work. Comparatively, um, during the same years that these, you know, they were looking at um, studies of how they cultivated rice fields, uh, you'd have Europeans hardly working at all. In fact, they would, because things were bad or hard, they would, like, start starving themselves. It's like, well, you know, I, I can't seem to make it for the food. Instead of getting out there and, like, working harder, they're just like, well, I'm just going to go into, you know, economic mode and eat less, and it's just kind of interesting. I like study. Spain's method, you know? Like, just take time off and nap <laughs> in the middle of the day. Hilarious. <laughs> I wanted to put this slide in here. Just the knowledge of truth is altogether too precious to be hoarded up, bound about, hid in the earth. Even one talent entrusted by the master is to be faithfully employed. Mm -hmm. So often we have this knowledge 
especially if you're a Christian and you've grown up with this information, there's a whole world out there that knows nothing yeah. about the Bible. And, you know, if we just spend a little bit of time, how do I evangelize? How do I reach out? How do I share my faith? Even if you're not the one that can say it, you know what a brilliant way that you can do? Watch videos and then email that video to somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Send somebody a link and say, hey, I watched this really cool YouTube channel called LED Live. You guys should check that out. Yeah. Right? What's the name of the YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. LED Live. <laughs> I mean, it's off the chain, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a way where if you can't even say it, you can use that time to, to write up a quick email to your friends, family, and share that with people. Um, you know, send them a book like what Mikey does. You know, yeah. he's always sending books to people. I think that's just a beautiful way. I want to um, share with you, there is an interesting book that was written by a nurse that um, she was um, um, a nurse that worked with dying patients. And so when they were always constantly dying, she would obviously talk with them. And, and uh, you know, being a hospice nurse, she would, you know, ask them if there's anything that they regret in life. And she noticed that there was the same things coming up over and over mm. again. Everybody that was dying literally was like saying the same things. I regret this, 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 and this. And so she decided to write a book. And I want to share with you some of the things that, that people regret most to die when they die. Number one regret that came up over and over and over again was I wish that I had the courage to live a life that was true to myself and not a life that others expected of me. That's deep. It's deep, wow. right? Because the world tries to push on us some sort of life that we need to live and conform us into this box that we need to have that kind of clothing and that kind of car and that kind of lifestyle or whatever like this, right? And that's the picture that our society is putting out there, and people regret that the most. Well, can I say it's true for also the Christian, hmm. that they were trying to live for others or live from this book, um, trying to conform themselves to that instead of developing a relationship with Christ and then living it, living out their life truly for Him mm -hmm. and not for others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Having a more enjoyable Christian experience instead of a miserable one. I would agree. Number two wish that people had when they died is I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Wow. They said I think it was 75 wow. percent of all the males had this one thing to say. I, I actually recently ran into a guy that was into real estate and he when I was talking with him I was kind of interested in real estate and so I was like you know so you, you know you have how many houses in, in in this area and he said I had a hundred and something houses. Wow. In Chattanooga, like, are oh, you wow. are you just like, like crazy rich? He's like, look, I had no life. Mm. My kids grew up around me, and all I was doing was was literally running around and doing all this. Mm. And he goes, now I'm old. I can't spend the money, and I've got gobs of it. And what did I do? I wasted my life. Man. So think about so. that. The number two wish that every dying person has, pretty much, is I wish I wouldn't have died, or wish I wouldn't have worked so hard. Number three. I wish I would have the, had the courage to express my feelings. Dude, wow. yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Feeling it already. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Tell someone that you love them. Tell them that you appreciate them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't even begin to tell you, like, when you begin to praise God, what it does to your, your thinking about God. Mm -hmm. Get in that habit of telling God, God, you are so awesome. Man, you, you, you just take care of me, like, like amazingly, and I don't deserve any of this. If you just verbalize that constantly to God, it will change the way that you view God. That was my entire car ride here this morning, man. Yeah. <laughs> After the things they did for me yesterday, I, you know, often I get in the car and like I said, I try to find some thing to watch or something. And I was like, no, I'm going to praise God for what he's been doing in my life, you know? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Here's number four. I wish that I would have stayed in touch with my friends. You know, we all go through life. We yeah. kind of get busy. We get new friends. I actually have a friend of mine right now that I'm praying for, and I'm praying for hard, and I say, God, give me this friend. Give mm. me this friend. He's not converted. I know he's not converted, but he has a heart of gold. Give me this friend. And that takes time for yeah. you to stay in touch. You know what I mean? You've got to communicate. You've got to be in a relationship. Number five, I wish I would have let myself be happier. That was the mm. number five wish that wow, people to had to let when themselves they were dying. be happy. Right? Yeah. Wow, that's right? interesting. Some people feel either guilty or whatever. Romans 13, 11 through 12 says this And that, knowing the time that is now high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. 
The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I believe that if we were to pick our heads out of the sand and look at the time where we live in today, we would realize real fast, time is so short. The time that we have on this planet is so short. And, it, and if you just learn to be wise with your time, spend it getting a knowledge of God. Spend it getting a knowledge of how to share your, your knowledge with other people. I guarantee you, you will be so excited when you get to heaven and somebody walks up to you in heaven and says, you know what? My whole family is here because of something that you said to me. Mm -hmm. That, I think, will be worth more than anything else mm -hmm. uh, when you get to heaven. Did you know that 57% of all people surveyed, this is according to a Timex survey, say they don't need an alarm clock? <laughs> wow. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Do you guys need an alarm clock? Yes. I do. Yeah. I will <laughs> sleep till 12. <laughs> I, hate, I hate alarm clocks. And I, I rarely actually put them on. And it drives my wife nuts. Because yeah. she's like, why don't, you, why don't you set an alarm? And I'm like, I'll wake up. I know I'll wake up. You know? And I generally do. It's very rare that I'll actually sleep in. Um, I have to admit, it is pretty cool. There was a time where I was better and more scheduled with when I went to bed and when I woke up. And yeah, I, I would actually wake up before my alarm clock, just a few yeah. minutes before. And it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't stand being woken up abruptly. I think that's oh, yeah. my main reason why. I do not well, like, 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 I remember Well, there's my, those Zen ones that kind of... Yeah. Yeah, see, that's totally my style. That's totally my style. It needs to be really soft, and it needs yeah. to whisper things in my ear. Like, it's oh, no. <laughs> no, I have, I've purposely picked the most annoying ringtone, and, oh, and the only way I can do it is yeah. to have an alarm set yeah. every five minutes for yeah. an entire hour. Yeah. Have you oh, slept through an that. alarm before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I that mean, was me in high school. Yeah. Everything would be oh, blaring, my, and I'm just knocked my, out. My <laughs> stepmother, I think, sets, like, multiple, like, six, seven alarms. To a ring at the same time? No, all the time. Oh, like like every five you, minutes. Yeah, you keep shutting off. And it's like, after the seventh one, <laughs> I would throw that thing out the window. No, that's how I have to do it. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I want to share with you this verse in Ephesians 5, 8 through 21. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but ye are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is the acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them or expose them. For it is a shame to even speak of the things that which those, or, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For, what's, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that, the, that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as the wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Man, redeeming the time. That's right. <clears throat> so don't walk as children in darkness. There's a lot of light. Um, the Bible has a lot of positive information on how to live a better life. I believe that's what it's really there for. It's there to improve the quality of life and not keep you in darkness. And we Psalms are, and Proverbs are some good ones, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we're yeah. running out of time. So spend it wisely. Amen. That's what I wanted to say. We hope you guys enjoyed this LED Live. And uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, you know, we, found, we count it such an honor to be able to share information, what we're excited about, talk about some of these life issues. So, you know, if you want to share our channel with someone else, get on Facebook, write a little post, um, you know, send us your stories. If, if this ministry has been really impactful in your life or your walk, um, we want to hear about it. it. It not only gives our team encouragement, but it also gives other people encouragement as well to know that God can change and transform your life. So um, we hope that what you gain out of this LED is you need to be able to spend some good quality time with God to build a proper relationship with Him. So don't waste time on all of this media junk in the world that, that our channel has analyzed for the last 10 years. Um, really pick up the source of truth, the Word of God. Get to know the God of the Bible and spend some time with Him. You will not be sorry. Amen. We thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. God bless.